I want to talk about the topic of dividend policy. Now, dividends are clearly an important part, an important decision for a company to make because we value stock, or at least one of the models we use to value stock is based on the present value of expected future dividends. Now, what is dividend policy? Dividend policy is the decision to pay dividends versus retaining funds to reinvest in the firm. Now, if you think about it, different types of companies make different types of dividend policy decisions. Young emerging companies usually pay no dividend. Why? Because they reinvest their earnings back into the business to grow the business. And you find that a lot with tech companies when they're first starting out. They have lots of, lots of good ideas, lots of projects they think are quite profitable, and they tend to reinvest in those businesses. Or they tend to buy other types of companies that can add to their, to their business. Now, oftentimes, when you find a larger company, a company that's been around a long time, they start paying dividends. Take a company like General Electric. General Electric is a very big company, and while they're certainly looking for good things to reinvest in, it's also very difficult for them to do that. They are so large that finding a small company to buy that has some new exciting technology that might add ten million dollars, even a hundred million dollars to their bottom line, doesn't really help them very much. It doesn't help them very much because this is a you know, multi-billion dollar corporation. Okay? A, f a couple million dollars, even a couple hundred million dollars is very, very small to them. Same with a company like Microsoft these days. Again, a very large company investing in, in a small business doesn't help them very much. So oftentimes they will start paying out dividends. Now, the theory of dividend policy is basically that if the firm reinvests the capital now, they can grow it and they can pay a higher dividend in the future. Now, in a seminal work in 1961, Franco Modigliani and Merton Miller discussed why dividend policy may not matter at all under certain conditions. Okay, you may be familiar with the Modigliani-Miller theorems of capital structure, and I've discussed those in some previous videos. And they extended that to the concept of dividend policy. Now, what are the assumptions they make? They make some pretty restrictive assumptions, but usually that's what we do when we create a model. And then later we'll come back and perhaps relax the assumptions to see how the model holds up in the real world. But their assumptions assume that there are no personal or corporate income taxes. There are no stock flotation or transactions costs. So if a company decides to issue stock so that it can pay a greater dividend this period, it doesn't, it doesn't cost them anything to issue the stock. They still have to pay shareholders the fair return, but it doesn't cost them anything to issue the stock. Uh, financial leverage does not affect the cost of capital. Both managers and investors have access to the same information concerning uh, the firm's future prospects. The firm's cost of equity is not affected in any way by the distribution of income between dividend and retained earnings and dividend policy has no impact on a firm's capital budgeting. So we've got these assumptions and let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have Stern Corporation. It's an all equity firm with 100 shares outstanding. Investors are going to require 10% return. And let's assume that expected cash flow is $10,000 each year and that the firm plans to dissolve itself in two years. So the firm can either pay out dividends of 10000 per year for each of the next two years. So they're going to pay out all of their expected cash flow in the form of the dividend. And since there are 100 shares, if you take the $10,000 divided by 100, uh, 100 shares, you get $100 per share. The other possibility is that they could pay an $11,000 dividend this year um, raising the other thousand dollars by issuing stock. They could also issue bonds, but let's stick with stock. Then pay an amount in year two sufficient to provide new shareholders with the same 10% return that stock investors require 
uh, for, for purchasing the stock. So let's see how this looks out looks. In plan A, the cash flow in years one and two is ten thousand. They don't issue any new stock, so those are that's zero. So the cash flow that's available to shareholders is ten thousand in year one, ten thousand in year two, and they just pay out all of that in the form of a dividend. And as we said before, the ten thousand dollars, since there's a hundred shareholders, is a hundred dollars per share. So what's the price per share for the stock? We just take the present value of the dividends, 100 divided by 1.10 plus 100 divided by 1.10 squared, which is the dividend in year two, and we get 173.55. Now let's go to plan B. So for plan B, they still have a $10,000 cash flow in year one, but they're going to issue $1,000 in new stock. And so now they're going to have $11,000 available to pay uh, cash flow available to pay shareholders. If we take that 11,000, we divide it by the 100, we get $110 a share. So the first cash flow is 110, and we take the present value of that divided by 1.10. How about year two? We have a $10,000 cash flow. We have no new stock being issued, but we have to pay out $1,100 to the new shareholders. We have to pay them back the thousand we initially um, of the stock they purchased, plus another 10% or another $100 in terms of uh, the dividend they would want or the return they would require, and that turns out to be $11 per share. So what's left for existing stockholders? Well, if we had 10,000, we paid out 1,100. There's 8,900 available to existing stockholders. That turns out to be 89 a share. Okay, we take the 89, we divide it by 1.10 squared. Okay, 10% being the required return. We get the same $173.55. So in this case, it doesn't matter whether the firm pays a greater dividend this year and a smaller dividend next year or vice versa. Okay? And we could also show the case, I'm not going to show it here, that if they didn't pay the higher dividend this year, you could have created that by simply selling some of your shares this year. Remember, there are no tax implications here and receiving a bigger payout this year and a smaller payout next year. So under these assumptions, uh, it doesn't matter what dividend policy the firm uses. And one of the major contributions of Modigliani and Miller um, back in the late 50s, early 60s with these seminal papers on capital structure and dividend policy is the concept of arbitrage, that if if um, it weren't the case, there would be an arbitrage opportunity. If these two plans didn't work out the same, you could show that you could actually earn a risk-free profit by undertaking one plan, okay, and you know selling short the other plan, etc.